This is something I did not expect to happen so quickly. UFC's flyweight contender Jillian Robertson submits former strawweight champion Rose Namajunas in 65 seconds with a rear naked choke, one of Rose Namajunas' best submissions in a pure grappling match for Fury Pro Grappling 6. And she did it very easily. Now, to preface, Rose did say that she took it on short notice. She had to travel there. She didn't have energy. She made some excuses about the about the match, but it goes the other way as well, right? Jillian Robertson also took this on short notice. The match was made in like a week. They both came in there. They looked roughly the same size. It was at 135 pounds. Robertson seemed to be a little bit bigger, and she definitely used that size, at least to some sort of advantage here. She mentioned after to her coach, that Rose was fast. Rose was very fast. And when she kept faking for the shot, faking to grab the hand, Robertson told her coach that Rose is just a bit too fast. So she had to do something in order to create contact. And it was actually Rose that came in on Jillian first, trying to go for the single collar, but then Jillian got one on Rose. But Rose pushes in the single collar, rolls out of it, and counters with a body lock trying to get on the outside. Robertson though counters Rose's attempt at control with an underhook. So it stops Rose in her tracks, and now Rose is almost in a 50-50 position with the bigger, stronger person. So Rose understands now, because of the size advantage from Jillian, she has to force as much separation as possible and use her speed in order to win this. She can't go back and forth to Jillian in close range like that. She'll eventually either gas out, or she'll get overpowered. So she lets go of the body lock and crosses her left arm in between them two in order to keep separation. As long as that arm is in between them, their bodies are never going to touch. Robertson knows this. So she lets go of her right underhook and grabs on Rose's right arm with both of her hands. She has two on one, which is going to make that grip very strong and Rose is not really going to be able to resist it with that arm alone. So what does Rose do? She brings up that posting arm and gets an overhook in order to separate Robertson's grip as well as keeping control of the position. And Robertson gives Rose the biggest of arm drags, pulling Rose to the ground and rotating to her left to capture the leg. This is gonna cause some imbalance here and Rose gets straight up to her feet instead of actually going into another position and scrambling with Robertson which you would actually think would be Rose's advantage to scramble in these kind of positions. But the fact that she stands up, Robertson decides to hang on to Rose. You notice her inside hook with the right leg, hanging around Rose's body, eventually forces Rose to fall back to the mat. And remember last time, Rose stood up from that position. And you see that Rose planted her hand. She has no control over anything Robertson's doing at this point. She can't control the grip. She can't control of what position Robertson's going to try to advance to. So now she has two choices. She can either risk pulling guard, which is going to give Robertson either a half guard or a side control position, or she could risk standing straight up again and risking a back take. And we already know what Rose is going to do here. She's going to stand straight up and Robertson rotates to the back and grabs onto that neck, pulling Rose to the mat. She's been spending too much time with Justin Gaethje. No, I'm just kidding. It's just a joke. And that's the beginning of the end right there. Rose is constantly just trying to push the elbow upward to get away from her neck, but it goes across her face. And you can see that Robertson doesn't have both hooks in. Rose does a good job of angling her body in a way where Robertson had a hard time doing so, but she didn't need both the hooks. Rose could not escape at all. Even tried to squeak out of there. The grip was way too strong and that hook alone was keeping her from moving out of there. And you can see Jillian's hand grip here. She has constant wrist control of Rose's left arm, the same arm that's pushing the choke upward. But what does that mean? Rose is only focusing on the choke and not focusing at all of Robertson's doing with her other arm. So Robertson gave up on getting a precise choke and went straight to crushing the face. Full strength, full squeeze on the face, and eventually it squeezes downward into the neck, and that's where Rose taps out. She knows she was beat, she couldn't get out of the position because of the hook, and she ultimately couldn't fight off the choke itself. So, an amazing performance by Jillian Robertson, defeating a good grappler in Rose Namajunas, they're both black belts, Rose got the black belt way before Jillian did. Jillian got her black belt two years ago, but it definitely shows the superior pure grappler and there's no mistake in why Jillian Robertson has the most submission wins in women's UFC history. This just shows even further of how great of a grappler she actually is. And I know now even her MMA opponents are really gonna take note of how crafty she is on the ground. Submitting Rose is absolutely no joke for anybody. And she did it in 65 seconds, crazy man. So happy for her. And credit to Rose for taking the match as well, flying in there from Denver. We love seeing these kind of things, especially when there's no fights. 